What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about the income in America. And this is going to be an illustrative deep dive into why people are struggling. First of all, there are purportedly 160 million people in the workforce. Okay. Now, when you start aggregating the income, 130 million people in the current workforce make less than $50,000 a year. Also, for those of you who want to defeat the global reset, I've got some live training that is coming on this Tuesday, 7 p.m. The link's below if you want to be part of that. And the first part of the training is free. All right, so I've been doing a lot of research and I've been really looking at the numbers because from a number standpoint, we're officially not in the recession and we're officially have extremely low unemployment. However, one of the things that I've recently done is signed up for Instacart. I signed up for Uber. I signed up for Lyft. And what I did is I'm not actively doing them. I just signed it up to see what the people who are doing Instacart, Lyft, or Dash, what kind of deals they're getting. And it was really interesting because Instacart has this special going on that if you do six batches before the 16th, you get $120. And I've been looking at the batches and it's been, put it this way, if you were doing Instacart full time, you would be hard pressed to make $100 a day. And that's an eight hour day. And you are driving your car and you're putting wear and tear on your car and your body doing Instacart. So what I've been seeing with the numbers is that unemployment is rising, but more importantly, the wages. Americans recently in the last five years got wage increases. And before that, it was like 40 years before there was a substantial wage increase. So when you look at the numbers and you look at the number of people in the workforce and you look at 130 million people are making less than $50,000 a year. If you look at the average rent across America, the average rent is $1,000, which is $12,000 a year, which is 25% of $50,000. But here's where the numbers get really, really funky. Out of that 160 million people in the American workforce, 80 million people make less than $30,000 a year with that same rent of $1,000 per month, which is 12,000 minus 30. That's 18 K at least 18 K. And that's, that's, that's just gross. That's so when you look at the numbers and you look at what people are doing and you look at what people are earning, it makes sense that people are struggling because I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again. If you're not making enough money, you don't have a money problem, you have a skill set problem. Whatever you're doing isn't providing the marketplace enough value to move you out of income danger zone number one. 130 million people are in income danger zone number one. And why is income danger zone? And this is where I'm gonna ruffle a little feathers. I've, there are many YouTubers, including Dave Ramsey, that if you invest in the stock market for 10 years, you can become a millionaire. That is patently false. You, and don't take my word for it, take this exercise, go online and pull up an investment calculator and then take $300 times 40 $300 invested each month times 40 years. You're not even gonna get close to a million dollars. 
And that's for the person who makes $30,000. That's the most money they can invest. Now, if you invest for $300 per month for 50 years, you can become a millionaire. Now, here's where it takes. If you want to become a millionaire in 20 to 25 years, you need to be investing twenty-five to $35,000 per year, depending upon the yield that you get. The yield, if you get 6%, you're gonna need 35,000. If you're getting seven, eight, nine, 10%, you can get by with 20, 25,000. But wait, wait a minute, over half the country only makes $30,000. So even if these people are living a good financial life, and what I mean by that is that they're not living above their means, they're not driving stuff they can't afford, they're not living where they're afford, and they have a long-term emergency fund, they have a short-term emergency fund, because they don't have enough material income, they cannot become what I like to call an investor of significance. To become an investor of significance, you need to be putting away two to $5,000 per month for minimum two decades, minimum. So America doesn't have, um, America has an income problem. And part of this income problem is coming from the school system. And once again, like I, I've watched Dave Ramsey because I love to hear these people call in because, you know, Dave Ramsey has a very affluent group of people who follow him. And it, it's, just, it's just funny to listen to this stuff. But unless you're getting damn near 20% returns on a consistent basis, year after year, decade after decade, it is pretty damn hard to turn 300 to $500 a month invested over the long haul into a million dollars. It's practically impossible. Once again, don't take my word for it. Take an, go to online, pull up an, an investment calculator and do $300 per month for 20 years, 400, 500, and see what you come up with. You're not coming up with a million dollars. And here's the thing that is so damning. 30 years in the future, a million dollars is not gonna be what it is today. It's not. So ideally you would need more because if you're in income danger zone, number one, which is 130 million people, let's go ahead and talk about, why do I call it income danger zone number one? I call it income danger zone because you're on such a slippery slope a flat tire can cause a financial crisis. I own a rental car business and the number of people who will call me at 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 10.30 at night, hey, I got a flat tire. All right, call a tow truck, get a new tire. And for my cars, getting new tires are 180 to 500 bucks, depending upon if it's the Porsche or not, all right? And I consistently we get into fights with people over flat tires. It's like, let me explain to you what happened. Uh, I had a guy that was driving the Porsche and he actually, this is how the message started. He said, I got a bad tire, the tire's flat. And I know from experience that when the tires are flat, they've run over something. They've run over a nail or something or a pothole, they've done something. And we get into this very con contentious argument back and forth during text. And he's like, you need to just come get your vehicle off my property right now. And I was like, if you harm my property, I'm gonna sue you. And you think I'm playing? That vehicle better be there when the tow truck comes to get it. And the vehicle was where it needed to be when the tow truck could get it. So the tow truck gets it. I go look at the vehicle. There is a hole in the front of the tire. And these tires run about 450 to 550 bucks per tire. I consistently ran into this problem. People have, they run over something, they would do something and they want me to fix it because they don't have the money. They don't have the money. 
I did have one person that ran over something that fixed the tire and they put the wrong size tire on the car. That's a whole nother story. But is income danger zone number one? Because as I just illustrated with you, a flat tire can be a personal financial crisis. Now, let's not even talk about catching COVID and being out of work for two weeks or a work for a month. Not even talk about that. That can literally, that can literally bankrupt the family because they're on that slippery, slippery slope. And this is why these videos here on YouTube and these advertisements, they prey upon people's ignorance. Uh, I'm gonna say something that may sound a little contentious, but I'm going to tell you that you're not going to buy a course for 1500 or 2500 and develop this high income skill and quit your job in 30 days. It's not gonna happen. You wanna know why? This income, this, un, this high income skill they're talking about is closing. Now, this is the part that they leave out. First of all, you must have a product that people want and you must have leads that are coming in and you must have, it, it's, it's, it's not just develop this high ticket skill of closing people. You've got a prospect, you've got a market, you've, there, 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 there's, a, there's at least 15 elements to this whole thing. So if you're on the phone and you can be a really good salesperson and you can close people, that's great. But where are your leads coming from? We're, 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 you know, there, there, there's so much more to it. And that's why I say that these people are preying upon your ignorance because they know you're desperate. If you're in the income danger zone, number one, and everything's going right in your life, your job is paying, there's no issues with your job, no one's sick, you don't have any personal crisis, you don't have any car issues, you don't have any personal emergencies, it, you're making it, you're living, you're eating every day, you have a place to stay, you have something to drive. But if one little thing happens, one little thing. I personally know someone that was in income danger zone number one and her transmission went bad. Now, this is the chain of events. Because this person didn't have, let me break it down to you, because this is why you need a long-term emergency fund, you need a short-term emergency fund, and you need a family operating the crown. The uh, long-term emergency fund, many people will tell you three to six months of your living expenses in the bank. Ideally, you wanna have a year of living expenses in your bank. And then you wanna have this short-term emergency fund of $5,000 to protect your long-term emergency fund and to actually start cooking with some gas, you wanna have a family operating account, which is, consists of two months living expenses so you can pay your bills as soon as you get them versus waiting until you get paid. So it, it, this is really, really important. So this person that I know, transmission went out, then she had it uh, looked at and they told her her new transmission was gonna cost 3,500 bucks. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. I guess you could just put that on the credit card. She said, my credit cards are maxed out. See, this is the situation that many people who are living on the income danger zone, they have just enough money to pay rent, uh, put some gas in the car, buy groceries, and they have virtually no money for extras. And this is where credit cards come in credit card debt I feel this year will explode because of the factor of inflation and the factor of rising unemployment. So you're going to see credit card balances explode because these people and going back to my friend. So 3,600 bucks and I was like, and I, I started asking her some very personal questions like how much money do you have saved? She said, I got 200 bucks in my savings account. I was like, wow, that's rough. Cause you know, one of the things that I'm doing is when I meet people, I don't really, you know, like if you watch some of the other videos where I'm showing all these receipts, I've stopped that. 
And this woman has no clue that I have access to funds. And I, I didn't tell her and I didn't offer anything. So her car goes down and she has a job where she has to go to work. She cannot work remote. So she is Ubering the work for a minute, which is extremely expensive. Oh yeah, she also has a car payment on this car. So the transmission goes out. She's Ubering the work. Then she runs into a problem and she runs out of money. She can't Uber the work and then she loses her job. So the car, which she still has a car payment on, doesn't work. So they come and repossess the car in the middle of the night. Repossess the car, don't have no money, they have no money in savings. And um, recently we communicated and she is about to be evicted. All this happened because the transmission in her car went out. And this has happened over the last six months. I know many of you are like, hey, you know, you should be saving your friends. I cannot save everybody. I would be broke as these people who are having these financial situations if I was trying to save everybody. I can just be a good friend and say, hey, that's terrible. And, you know, talk to them and be there for them. But I was just sitting there like, the number of people who don't have a savings account is staggering. And they don't have like, you know, one of the things I'm gonna talk about on uh, the money channel is, um, you need to have financial excess and because these people are in income danger zone number one they don't have enough money to create financial access years and years ago there was this guy who was amazing with money his name was fook he was in the military with me and george used to save 90 percent of his income when George got out of the military, this dude had $90,000 in the bank. He's an Asian dude. He paid cash for his car. And you know, and I was just like, how are you able to save so much money? He says, I don't have to pay rent and I get to eat for free three times a day. I, I have no, and he said, I have no need to spend any money. This dude was literally saved 90 to 95% of his check. And he did this for years and years and years. I would not be surprised if George is a millionaire today because of his prodigious savings habits. And that's a really stark contrast to the average American because the average American doesn't even have $2,000 cash money saved to offset an emergency. And part of the reason is, cause you know, I've been looking at income, I've been looking at spending. The average person is not a spendy person. You know, the average person doesn't have a lot of um, high consumption habits. They're not alcoholics, they don't do drugs. They don't have any of these situations, right? The average person. And the average person has a situation where they don't make enough money to live in these United States of America well. And this is one of the reasons that the credit channels literally exploded because everyone wants to have this high limit Navy federal credit card so they can go ahead and enhance their life. And one of the things that I want to teach you guys is how to make enough money where you can use credit for convenience. I've got like 40 credit cards and I have nothing on none of my personal credit cards. And I got probably 5,000 on one of my business credit cards. And I have four business credit cards and uh, the three of them, there's nothing on them. I assiduously avoid debt because, you know, if I could spend $25,000 on an asset that would yield me $5,000 per month, I would do it in a heartbeat. That's a good deal. But the reality is assets cost a lot of money. And what happens is leveraging credit and leveraging this other stuff, you can get the asset, but you know, um, I got two friends who do real estate. I got one friend who makes about 3 million a year and he buys houses cash. He renovates them 
And because he makes so much money, he can afford to sit on them until someone comes and pays him what he wants. I remember at one point he had did six projects and they were just sitting, sitting, sitting for eight months. Then within three months, all six sold for the price that he was asking. I think he made something like $4 million in two months. So he was able to get his money back and get a return on his investment. Now I have another friend who has about 20 houses, all of them with mortgages, average house cash flows at 300 bucks. So there's like 6,000 a month positive cash flow. And the pandemic has been horrible to this person. And this, you know, we were talking the other day and this person's on the verge of filing bankruptcy. So yes, it is good to have credit to buy assets. But if these assets are not producing cash flow in the return, that can be a very dangerous game. Because I am seeing something, and I will address this on the corporate game, that you will see that all millionaires and billionaires use other people's money to get rich. And to a degree that's true, but they're not using credit cards and they're not using business show. They're selling equity in their companies. That's a totally different game because when you buy a stock, you buy that stock. And the only way you can get your money at that stock is to sell it to someone else. You can't go to the company and say, hey, you know, the stock price is tanking. I want my money back. You can't do that because you bought a share of that company. And when you buy that share of that company, you buy their accompanying risk with it. So it's a different game. And I'm going to address that on the corporate game. But yeah, most of America is a sitting economic duck. And unless you do some things, and I'm gonna talk about some things that you should do. Number one, you should get a long-term emergency fund. And for many of you, this is gonna take a few years to accomplish. See, when the times are good, this is when you need to put those squirrel, those nuts away like a squirrel puts nuts away for winter. You need to do it when it's good because it could take you three to four years to save up this money and it could take you six months to spend it or three months. You know, money that you have saved up, that is being spent and there's no income coming in, goes really, really quick, really, really quick. So what you wanna have is a long-term emergency fund, ideally with a year of your income in the bank. And then you wanna have a short-term emergency fund of $5,000. And why is a short-term emergency fund? My, if my friend who had this transmission drop, I had $5,000 emergency fund, could have paid it in this money. And see, one of the reasons you want to have cash set to the side, and there are many people who's like, take your cash out of the bank. Don't say, all right, if you're in income danger zone, number one, cash in the bank is your best friend. Cash in the bank is your best friend. Because number one, you should have the long-term emergency fund, you should have the short-term emergency fund. You should have the family operating account. And once you get that cash set aside, then at this point, get out of debt, then you can start investing. But if you start investing while you're in a lot of debt, and like, you know, let's say the only debt you have is a mortgage. Okay, and you wanna be invested. I would still say have that long-term emergency fund, have that short-term emergency fund, have that family operating account because Here's what happens. I have another friend who was a big investor. He was shoveling money on his investments. He had no money saved. His wife came down with cancer. Guess what he had to do? He had to sell his investments at a loss to help pay her bills. Because he had no cash. See, there are many people here on YouTube who will tell you that cash is bad, cash is trash. If you are in income danger zone, number one, cash is your best friend. Let no one dissuade you, let no one tell you, because you know, if you're someone who makes, let's go ahead and say $100,000 a month, consistently and reliably, you make $100,000 a month, which is 1.2 million a year, that's your cash flow. You could pretty much get around, you can get by without saving cash. You wanna know why? Because you have more money coming in per month than the average person makes in three or four years. So it's different. 
But going back to the 130 million people who make less than 50,000, going to the 80 million people who make less than 30,000, there's only 30 million people in the country who make 50,000, and this includes your 50, this includes your 60, 70, 80, 100, 200, 300. That's only 30 million people out of a population base of 335. 10% of the country, of the actual working population, let's see, actually that's, that's a little higher than that. I think it's about 25% that makes 50,000. And then when you start getting into 100K, we're talking about 7% of the working population seven eight percent of the working population maybe ten percent but it's including because when you look at single person income it's probably five or six percent when you look at dual income and household incomes that moves it up to ten percent but guys this is why people are struggling and i'm going to start doing some videos talking about things you can do and a way of living. This has to be a lifestyle. You can't just like, I'm gonna do this for a hot minute. You have, cause I have weeks where I can actually tell you, eh, last week I spent 550 bucks and that was on groceries, uh, some gas and some other stuff. That's it, that's what I spent last week. You have got to be so on top of your money during this global reset. You cannot be playing around with your money. You cannot be playing around with your money because January, we're gonna look at January. I'm gonna do a video seeing what the job unemployment filings were for January. And also these numbers are often revised three, four months down the road. That's why I call them voodoo economics because they'll put out a number and then four months later they'll revise it up. And it's like, wait a minute, why didn't you give me the real number at the first time? So. This is why we have the issues that we have. And it goes back to the school system because people aren't taught economics. People aren't taught money. And I'm getting ready to do some training called home economics because, you know, everybody wants to be a boss or own their own business. And typically what I'm seeing is, and I've seen this because I've been in the space, I've seen people who will come out with a product or something, they'll be hot for a minute, then they'll go away. And they'll be hot for a minute and they'll go away. You want to have long-term, durable, sustainable, economic success. And this is something that's going to take dedication, that's going to take a plan, that's going to take a strategy. And this is some of the things that we're going to come up with the upcoming training. But right now we're in a situation where half of the working population is two paychecks away from poverty i want you to think about that because this is why people struggle this is like you know if you have some to spare time check out the instacart videos check out the doordash videos because these are simple things that people can do to earn money and typically the money isn't that good. There's a guy who cracks me up. His name is Nugs, N-U-G-G-S. He is funny as hell. And he does DoorDash and he makes more money from YouTube because he, he's got a little challenge where he's trying to do 10,000 in a month. 6,000 of that is coming from YouTube <laughs> and only 4,000 is coming from DoorDash. And he's going hard. So what you're seeing in the gig economy, and I'm gonna do a whole totally different video on that, because like I said, I've been observing these apps, is people don't have a fundamental understanding of money and how to make money and how to produce money. They understand how to work a job, get an income and spend money, but they don't understand the foundational aspects of what you need to do to make money. And that's some of the training that's coming up because I feel that here at the Institute of Economic Thought that we need to give you people the lessons and the things that you need to do. So look forward to that. Uh, this is January. We're gonna go, probably go really hot and heavy in February with this. 
and there's gonna be classes and instructions teaching you guys the way that you need to think, the way that you need to position yourself. And once again, below the first training of your first company, it's free because I feel that people need that economic knowledge. So that's my gift to you. And then this Tuesday at 7 p.m., we're gonna get into the second aspect of your first company. But this is why people struggle. It isn't because people have crack habits or they're bad people. That has nothing to do with it. They fundamentally just don't make enough money. And there is no understanding of money. There's no understanding of the long-term implications of living a low income lifestyle. This is why a video which recently exploded black money. I talked about the five reasons that black people don't have any money and living in the low income uh, rent, low rent district. That is a dangerous thing to do. And we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about a lot more. So let me know your thoughts and opinions, guys, and I will see you in the next video. And once again, the free training is in the first comment below. So I'll see you guys in the next one.